You know, there's nothing quite like carrying around a big, thick accessory in your pants. I'm, I'm talking about belts here, people. Get your mind out of the gutter. Now, if you care to look back at my first video ever, it was, in fact, a belt review. And it was on the Anson ratchet belt system, and I thought it was, like, the coolest thing I had ever seen. And as a matter of fact, I still use that belt today. Works great. Loosened up a little bit on the, uh, the tang or whatever, but in function, it works just fine. And it looks kind of cool because it's all beat up. So my, my love for belts goes back a long way. The thing is, these videos about belts, they tend to not get a whole lot of views. So I don't do a lot of them. But today, what I want to do is sort of round up my belt collection, give you my thoughts on them. So that way you have a more, um, more data points, I guess, to buy a belt for yourself. But here's a really important bit. When it comes to choosing a belt, it really, you have to look at what your usage is going to be. Do you want a thin dress belt that matches your shoes that you can wear to, to work or you know business casual? If so, that's very, very simple. And a lot of times companies like Allen Edmonds will offer belts that exactly match the leather on your shoes. But if you're like me and you want your belt to stand up to basically everything from stacking firewood to working on your truck, well then most of the time you're gonna be looking at some of these more fancy artisanal work belts. There are plenty of work belts out there. You can get them from brands like Carhartt or Duluth or Dickies or any number of work brands, but there's a lot of great small makers who do belts exceptionally well. And if you know me, I always like to support the small guys. And the first belt that I ever got like this was from a brand called Hollows Leather. And it's just a small one man shop, but it was the first one that I had bought that was, you know, $135 and really showed me how good a belt could be. Now this belt, when I bought it brand new, was just veg tan leather, so it has that sort of pink tan color to it, natural leather color, and then it darkens over time. So if I could find some of those old video clips, I'll show you what it looked like brand new versus what it looked like looks like today. And it's caramelized, it, it looks beautiful. It somehow has documented my weight loss over the last year or so. Basically, this belt has been around my waist for every important life event of the last three years. Now that's definitely saying something. Next up is this crazy looking belt called the Bully Belt from K&H Leather. And I think that this was a limited edition, sort of a collaboration kind of thing. It's made out of what many consider to be the best belt leather out there, which is the Oak Bark Bridal Leather from J and FJ Bakers in England. This stuff is really crazy thick, dense, and substantial, so it's absolutely not for the faint of heart. And to top it off is this awesome hand-hammered buckle from B Strong Forge made from solid copper. This is such a cool and different belt. I really feel like this might have been what belts probably were made like back in the day, you know? Hand-forged buckles and some thick leather that's gonna last you the rest of your life. I love that stuff. It's no secret that I love my NYX boots. They're damn near bulletproof, and even though they're expensive, they're actually a really solid investment. So when they came out with their belt, I was expecting the same thing, and I wasn't disappointed. You could honestly tow your car with this thing if you wanted to, I guess. It will test the limit of your belt loops and feels very much like, kind of like my old tool belt, but without the pouches on the side. And as tough and over the top as the belt is, Unfortunately, the finishing is kind of mediocre. You know, the edges are cut, but they're not really treated or burnished in any way. But then again, this is really a work-focused and not style-centric belt. Guys who buy belts like this are likely to thread them through a pair of Carhartt duck pants and go to work. So in that function, this belt is excellent and relatively affordable for $75. Finally is this crazy mountain belt from Craft & Lore. It's the biggest and burliest of the bunch even edging out that NYX belt in sheer size. This is in their russet color with antique brass hardware. And to be fair, this is the bigger of the two sizes at inch and three quarters. So don't let that scare you. There's a smaller version if you want that. At $130, you get one behemoth of a belt, which is made very nicely. This is like the combination of the NYX scale combined with the finer finishing of some of those other like artisanal makers. But even though these are the belts that I currently have and really like, I'm interested to try out some other makers as well. I mean, just off the top of my head, uh, Pigeon Tree Crafting has a great looking belt with a really interesting quick release. They also have those awesome teardrop style holes that I like so much. I just think that's a really cool look. Plus it helps the, the buckle lay flatter. I guess the same thing can be accomplished with oval holes if you wanted to. 
And you know what? Actually, talking to some makers, one of the interesting things about those belt holes is that they're very difficult to make in comparison to just regular round holes, which you can just punch out because each one has to be facing exactly the same way. So oftentimes these punches are made up in rows and punched at the same time to give you that, that uniform look. So there's other companies too, Sugarcane, uh, Tanner Goods, Pigeon Tree Crafting, as I mentioned. There's a lot of great leather makers out there. So there's a world of awesome belts to try. My most recent one is this Craft and Lore one, which I'm wearing right now. And as I mentioned, it's the biggest of the bunch, but um, I like that. I like a big chunky belt, uh, not overly so. You know, a lot of those Western belts have big old buckles. That's not really my thing, but everybody has their own style. I like the idea of a work belt that's a little bit dressed up to go kind of casually as well. And that's where this really uh, shines. But as you can see by that Hollows leather belt, these things only get better with age, which is probably the thing that I love the most about leather anyway. So I wanna know from you, which belts I should try out or which belts I'm totally missing out on, which ones people in the comments or viewers should check out for themselves. This is one of the best things about having this channel is that I can source this information from people who may know better than I do. What a great thing to, uh, to have and uh, be able to share with other people. Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll catch you later.